This is chapter 8. Soldiers of my old guard, I bid you farewell. By Napoleon Bonaparte, farewell speech to the Imperial Guard on the 20th of April, 1814. Napoleon Bonaparte, born on the 15th of August, 1769, in Corsica, of Italian descent. He became an army officer in 1785, beginning a brilliant military career, perhaps the most dazzling since Alexander the Great. In 1796, he married Josephine de Beauharnais, but they had no children, and he later divorced her to marry Marie-Louise, the daughter of the Austrian emperor. He became the first consul in 1799 and emperor of the French five years later. By repeated victories over European coalitions, he extended French rule and his own dynastic ambitions throughout much of Europe, making France a continental superpower, albeit at a cost of thousands of French lives. He also revolutionized military organization and training. He abdicated twice, first in 1814 after Paris fell to his enemy, enemies and again in 1815 after surrendering himself to the British in the aftermath of Waterloo. He continued to be regarded as a French national hero with a tomb in Les Invalides in Paris. Napoleon's lasting legacy is the system of civil law, the Code of Napoleon, and the many institutions bearing his name that exist in France today. He died in exile on St. Helena on the 5th of May, 1821. On the 20th of April, 1814, Napoleon Bonaparte, the French scourge of Europe, bade farewell to officers from his most loyal troops, the old or imperial guard. He had finally succumbed to pressure to abdicate as France's ruler as the European empire he had built up through military conquest over 20 years unraveled. The catalyst for his defeat was the ill-advised invasion of Russia in 1812. Despite victory at the Battle of uh, Borodino on September the 6th and the burning of Moscow, Napoleon's once mighty Grand Armée was decimated by disease and the ravages of the Russian winter on its return. As former French allies sensed weakness and switched sides, and as the opposing European alliance forced Paris to surrender, Napoleon stood down to save France from further disaster. Considering the depredations through which he had put his soldiers, not just in Russia, but through years of warfare and the extent of his personal ambition, it is hard to imagine that his rather self-regarding words could have found willing ears. But Napoleon was, above all, a professional soldier and he never lost the loyalty of a hard core of those who served under him. Indeed, just one year after the abdication, Having escaped exile on his island principality of Elba, he was able to rely on the loyalty of soldiers to turn against their government paymasters and to restore him to power, though his encore would last just 100 days. The man who had led France to military glory was actually born in Corsica, in Italy and in 1779 he began military school in France. 
where he earned the nickname the Little Corporal because of his short stature. In 1785 he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in artillery and in 1793 he gained national recognition and promotion to the rank of general after defeating the British at Toulon. He came to the, the defense of the revolutionary government in Paris through a show of force in 1794, the so-called whiff of grapeshot. Under the new French regime, the five-member Directoire, Napoleon now got to flex his military muscles in a series of victories in 1796 through 1798 France gained control of much of Italy but Rear Admiral Nelson's destruction of the French fleet at the Battle of the Nile in 1798 confounded Napoleon's ambitions in Egypt. With his star high, Napoleon effected a coup against the Directoire, becoming France's first consul, in effect a military dictator. But uh, by the start of the 1800s, Napoleon had subordinated Holland, Spain, the Austrian Netherlands, most of Italy, and neutralized Prussia and Russia. And by 1804, Napoleon was Emperor of France, and his military forces were gathering at Boulogne to invade Britain. Maritime supremacy saved Britain, but Napoleon instead turned the might of his land forces against Austria, achieving his greatest victory over a combined Austrian and Russian force at Austerlitz in 1806. The years 1807 through 1808 represented the apex of Napoleon's power. As unrivaled master of continental Europe, he now resorted to economic warfare against the recalcitrant British. He imposed the continental system forbidding his vassal states from buying British goods. However, in 1808, the military commander, who would be Napoleon's nemesis, was already making his mark. By 1813, the Duke of Wellington had forced the French out of Portugal and Spain and had crossed the Pyrenees putting pressure on Napoleon from the south, just as the reinvigorated allies were invading France from the east. At the same time, Napoleon, uh, the Napoleonic system under which three of the Napoleon's brothers and his son sat on European thrones was breaking up. Napoleon's story was not quite over yet. On March the 1st, 1815, having landed in France from Elba and received the army's support, he marched on Paris, which welcomed him. The frantic allies, discussing how to organize post-Napoleonic Europe at the Congress of Vienna, hurriedly debated what to do. They put their trust in Wellington at the Battle of Waterloo, on June 18th. Napoleon and his commanders made some uncharacteristically poor tactical decisions when the Prussians under Blücher reinforced Wellington, even Napoleon's old guard fled under re relentless fire. This time words of encouragement from their emperor were not enough. Soldiers of my old guard I bid you farewell. For 20 years I have constantly accompanied you on the road to honor and glory. 
in these latter times, as in the days of our prosperity, you have invariably been models of courage and fidelity. With men such as you, our cause could not be lost, but the war would have been interminable. It would have been civil war, and that would have entailed deeper misfortunes on France. I have sacrificed all of my interests to those of the country. I go, but you, my friends, will continue to serve France. Her happiness was my only thought. It will still be the object of my wishes. Do not regret my fate. If I have consented to survive, it is to serve your glory. I intend to write the history of the great achievements we have performed together. Adieu, my friends. Would I could, pr would I could press you all to my heart.